Today on The Hookup is part one of my updated Ultimate Secure Smart Home Network Guide. In this two-part series, I'm gonna walk you through the entire process of setting up a fast, secure, and reliable home network using Unify products and cybersecurity best practices. Today in part one, I'm gonna take you through product selection, wireless technologies, and optimal device placement. And then in part two, I'll cover setup in the new Unify 6.0 controller, including virtual LANs, firewall rules, port security, and intrusion detection and prevention. In 2019, I put out a three-part series about setting up a Unify home network, and a lot's changed since then. Unify has released some new software and devices, Wi-Fi 6 is out, and I got certified to teach networking and cybersecurity. So it's time for an update. This video is sponsored by HolidayCoro.com. Holiday Coro manufactures and sells everything that you need to get started with the holiday light show hobby. Whether you want to start out with a ready-to-run controller package or dive in headfirst and start building your own props, Holiday Coro has you covered. As expected, prices are lower and technical support is more available during non-peak season, so now is the right time to buy for next year. If you're watching this video before January 31st, check out the pre-season sales on everything that you need to have the best show on the block using the link in the description. First things first, let's talk about Ubiquity Unify. Unify is what's often called prosumer equipment, which basically means that it's suitable and probably designed for small to medium-sized businesses. But it's also been adopted by general consumers for home use. Traditionally, the gap in pricing between home network and business networking solutions has been pretty substantial. But Unify kind of split that difference, making it an unbeatable value for small businesses and a compelling option for home users who want more control over their networks. And based on some of the recent changes to the Unify dashboard, I suspect that home users are becoming an increasingly large percentage of their user base. But Unify certainly isn't going to be for everybody. And just like their pricing, they definitely have a sweet spot. Unify is great, but it isn't the most powerful or customizable home network possible. If you're a networking professional or a home lab tinkerer with a lot of networking knowledge and experience, then you're probably better off piecing together your own solution using PFSense as your firewall and router. Conversely, if you don't want to mess with any settings and you just want your router to work right out of the box, then you should probably just opt for one of the many mesh Wi-Fi systems on the market. Linksys Velop is the one that my network contractor friends recommend the most these days, but I've also had pretty good luck with the Nest and Aero solutions that I've deployed for both my friends and my family. However, if you're in that sweet spot where you want more granular control over your networks and devices, and you're able to follow tutorials, and you want to have confidence in the security and reliability of your network, then Unify is probably for you. If that sounds like your niche, stay tuned and let's talk about hardware selection. For equipment, every network is going to consist of a few important parts, including the router, firewall, switches, and wireless access points. A traditional router like you get from your internet service provider or one of those spaceship-looking devices from Asus actually combines all those parts into one device. In the Unify lineup, each part was a separate piece of equipment as of my 2019 videos, and it even required an additional component called a controller that's used to manage and send configurations to each Unify device. But in 2020, Unify released the Dream Machine and Dream Machine Pro, which combined the router and firewall with an 8-port switch, a controller, and in the case of the non-pro model, a wireless access point. While it's nice that these Dream Machine packages come at a slightly lower price than getting each piece of equipment separately, the real reason to choose the Dream Machine or Dream Machine Pro is the fact that they're equipped with much faster processors than the old Unify Security Gateway, which enables them to run security-related software like deep packet inspection and intrusion prevention systems that we'll talk about more in part two. In fact, the Dream Machine Pro did away with all of the fancy hardware offloading that their old USG routers used to do, and it tackles all of your routing using a quad-core ARM processor running at 1.7 GHz. This processor is the reason that the UDM Pro can examine all of your network traffic and check for malicious activity while maintaining 3.5 gigabits per second of throughput. Compared to the USG, whose dual-core 500 MHz processor can only muster 85 megabits of throughput with intrusion prevention enabled. If you saw my last video on the Dream Machine, you know that my first experience was not great. And after two weeks of intermittent issues, I reinstalled my old network equipment. After a few messages with Unify, support determined that I had a defective unit and I received an RMA for a new one. Things got busy, so the new replacement unit sat in the closet for the last three months, but I'm happy to report that this time the install went perfectly without any issues and I was able to migrate all of my settings to the UDM Pro in less than an hour. 
This could have been due to firmware updates, non-defective equipment, or just good luck, but it was much more the experience that I was hoping for when I installed the first UDM Pro, and what you should expect from a device that costs almost $400. All that is a long-winded way of saying that if you want to use Unify, the UDM Pro is currently the best option for your router, firewall, switch, and controller. If you already have a Unify system in place, you'll need to decide if the additional security features are worth the upgrade. But if you're building a new system from scratch, you should choose the UDM Pro over the Unify Security Gateway in almost all cases. A major complaint at the time of launch was that the UDM Pro required a Ubiquiti Cloud account to be able to log in and manage your system but I'm happy to report that you can now add local administrators and completely disable the cloud account. Unfortunately, you will still need a Unify account for the initial onboarding process, but at least it can be disabled after that. Next, let's talk about access points and wireless technology and all the hype around Wi-Fi 6. Wi-Fi has gone through lots of different standards over the years. 802.11b, g, and n all operate within the 2.4 gigahertz band, but offered improvements in security, speed, and data rate by implementing new technology and protocols. 802.11ac is a set of standards that operates strictly in the 5 gigahertz frequency band, but all wireless access points that are labeled as 802.11ac also include an 802.11n router for compatibility with old 2.4 gigahertz devices. As far as connection goes, the 5 GHz frequency is superior in almost every way. It has more non-overlapping channels, allowing for communication with less interference. It has the ability to serve multiple clients simultaneously if they support the multi-user, multiple in, multiple out technology. And the single connection radio rate is almost three times faster than the 2.4 GHz band. So why do 2.4 GHz devices still exist? First, physics dictates that as a wave's frequency increases, the amount of energy transferred from the wave to objects that it passes through will increase. This is called attenuation, and the more that a signal gets attenuated, the less distance it will travel, and the less useful and understandable the signal will be when it reaches its destination. So if speed isn't the name of the game, the 2.4 GHz band is much better at range and penetration. Second, Older 802.11n chipsets are much cheaper, so if you want your IoT devices to cost under $20, they're going to be using old tech, which unfortunately means they won't benefit from any of the fancy new Wi-Fi standards. 802.11ax, which is being called Wi-Fi 6, has some revolutionary changes that will increase the speed, signal, and density of Wi-Fi networks. Wi-Fi 6 is also the first standard that covers multiple frequency ranges from 1 to 6 GHz. But as great as Wi-Fi 6 sounds, it actually isn't as big of a deal as most people are suggesting. Because just like all the other new standards before it, even though it's backwards compatible with older devices, only new devices will support the new Wi-Fi 6 improvements. Unify recently released their first Wi-Fi 6 enabled access point, the Unify AP6 Lite. The AP6 Lite has two 2.4 GHz antennas and two 5 GHz antennas for non-Wi-Fi 6 traffic which means that compared with the Unify Nano HD, which has four 5 GHz antennas, it will have slightly lower total throughput speeds on the 5 GHz Wi-Fi band for non-Wi-Fi 6 devices. But if your home has a lot of IoT devices, which almost exclusively use that 802.11n standard and the 2.4 GHz frequency, then the AP6 Lite is gonna perform exactly the same as other access points like the Nano HD and the Flex HD, with the added benefit of adding Wi-Fi 6 for your compatible devices and it does it at about half the cost. If you already have Unify access points, then upgrading your home network to Wi-Fi 6 is probably gonna have very little effect, since it's likely gonna be five to 10 years before Wi-Fi 6 chipsets start appearing in low-cost IoT devices. But if you're deploying a network with a lot of high-performance devices, like a business where customers and employees are using their cell phones and laptops, then Wi-Fi 6 is gonna give you a significant performance boost. If you're building a new system, there's virtually no reason to buy the Nano HD or the Flex HD over the cheaper and more future-proof Unify 6 Lite. And the soon-to-be-released Unify 6 Long Range has the potential to increase the throughput for all of your devices with its 4x4 multiple-in, multiple-out technology on both the 2.4 GHz band and the 5 GHz band. But it's still in early access, and I haven't tested it. The last piece of hardware that you might need to add to your network are additional switches. Though it is a massive oversimplification, you can think of a switch like a power strip for your network. If you want to plug in a bunch of devices and you only have one outlet, plugging in a power strip can give you a bunch of outlets. Similarly, installing a switch where you have a single Ethernet port will give you a bunch of Ethernet ports at that location. The reason I say it's a massive oversimplification is that each port on a switch has a specific address, so it doesn't send every message that it receives to every connected device. That would be called a hub. Switches come in two main varieties. There's managed and unmanaged. 
A managed switch will allow you to update its configuration to restrict ports to specific devices or virtual networks, while an unmanaged switch is just plug and play without any additional configuration. And while you can put an entire unmanaged switch onto one VLAN, you can't configure it per port. The second big difference in switches is whether they have power over Ethernet which means they can provide both power and data over a single Ethernet line to your compatible devices. My biggest complaint about the Dream Machine Pro is that despite the inclusion of an 8-port managed switch, there are zero power over Ethernet ports, which are required if you want to connect a Unify access point without a separate PoE injector. In a similar failure, Unify's new 16-port PoE switches reduced the number of PoE ports from 16 to 8 without adding any additional functionality or lowering the price. They did add a small LCD panel to the front, but I definitely prefer having eight additional PoE ports to a small clunky touch panel. Thankfully, you can still buy the USW 16 150 watt, which provides the exact same switching capability with 16 PoE ports to power all of your security cameras, access points, and other PoE devices. Adding it all up in a medium to large size house, you're looking at just under $1,000 for a Dream Machine Pro, 16 port PoE switch, and three Wi-Fi 6 access points. As I said before, this is significantly more expensive than a mesh solution from Linksys, Google, or TP-Link, but much less expensive than a commercial solution from companies like Aruba or Cisco. And the Unify system is gonna perform much more similarly to the commercial solutions than it will to the mesh systems. Placement of networking gear is something that's often overlooked, but it can have a large impact on your satisfaction and the longevity of your equipment. The placement of the Dream Machine Pro and Switch may depend on where your house terminates its Ethernet drops. But here are a few quick tips on placement. The UDM Pro and the 16-port Switch both have active cooling fans that ramp up as the internal temperature increases. If you install your equipment rack in a space that you need to be silent, you're going to be irritated listening to the fans ramp up and down as your network traffic changes. For me, the UDM Pro and the 16-port Switch are not nearly as loud as my desktop computer, so mounting them in the same rack barely changes the overall sound output. Putting your gear in a closet might seem like an obvious choice, but be aware that most closets don't have proper ventilation and air conditioning, so you may run into heat issues with your Unify equipment. The maximum ambient operating temperature for a Dream Machine Pro and the 16-port switch is only 104 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not to say that your entire closet would reach 104 degrees Fahrenheit, but the area directly surrounding your network equipment could. Next is placement of your access points, and Ubiquiti has provided some specific instructions for the two mounting configurations of their disc-shaped access points. The strength of the signal is highest radiating out of the front of the device, so Ubiquiti suggests mounting them on the ceiling pointed down for high-density wireless environments, but they recommend mounting them on the wall facing out for the longest range. Your specific setup might prevent you from being able to accomplish these exact configurations. But as a rule of thumb, if you need to mount your access point in a centralized location, it should be flat against the ceiling. And if you need to mount it near the edge of your coverage area, you should put it vertically on the wall pointing in. Concrete and metal walls are going to cause wireless signal degradation in all frequencies. But as I talked about before, significantly more in the five gigahertz band. If at all possible, you should definitely avoid placing your access points in a room surrounded by concrete and don't attempt to provide long range coverage through a concrete wall. The last thing to remember is that Wi-Fi is a two way communication protocol. Even if you get an access point with a powerful transmitter, the devices need to be able to communicate back to it. It's for this reason that a few lower power access points will provide much better coverage than a single high power access point. And in part two of this series, I'll show you how to set up your access points with non-overlapping channels and tweak the transmitting power to ensure that they don't interfere with one another. If you still have questions relating to equipment selection, wireless protocols, or placement, leave me a comment or come join me on the Hookup Home Automation Facebook group and I'll try to answer your question as well as I can. Thank you so much to my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support on my channel. If you're interested in supporting this channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching the Hookup.